Jesus was a rock star. Hello, this is Pastor Scott Cruz, and this last Sunday we had massive technical difficulties, completely yours truly's fault. And so it's kind of ironic because the service is about coming to church, and I made it so that nobody could watch the service unless they came to church. That was actually, actually pretty funny. And so, uh, but we're going to do the same thing that we always do. I wonder if you would help me out, and you would say with me, say, there it is, Jesus help me to be what you want me to be, do what you want me to do, because people without you go to hell. Bless God. So Jesus breaks bread. Now, we often talk about how Jesus came, right? Jesus came to seek and save the lost. He came to give his life as a ransom for us that we can live life to the fullest. But how did he come? We know why he came. But how did Jesus come? Well, actually the Bible, uh, he came preaching, right? He came healing people. He came teaching people. But the Bible even gives us a very, even more succinct picture of how Jesus came and that is Luke 7 34 the son of man came eating and drinking now the context of this is that there are people that were actually criticizing him because he was eating and drinking and they, they even said about this guy this guy is nothing but a drunkard and a glutton I know what some of you are thinking I know what you're thinking I have more in, in common with Jesus than I thought. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Drunkard and a glutton. But because he, he, Jesus, he went and he ate at sinners' houses. He, hang, he hung out with people who, who were not part of the religious in crowd. And not only did he drink wine, but he even made wine at one. You know, he saved a party at one point. You know, and I'm sorry, that's in the Bible. It just, it just really is. Um, not that I, don't, I don't really drink, but, um, but Jesus was a drunkard and a glutton. So if we're going to love like Jesus, we got to drink and, no, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, but love like Jesus. Last few weeks, this has been a really important uh, series for us at Rock Church because a little while ago, the Lord spoke to my heart, and at least, or I spoke to God, and I said, you know, God, you, uh, you gave Solomon that chance. You said, Solomon, ask me anything you want, and I'll give it to you. And so I've had a prayer since last September, and I prayed this with my people on Sundays, and it's like, Lord, if you're going to do one thing for Rock Church, here's the one thing. If there was one thing you were going to do for Rock Church, Lord, this is it. Help us to really love well. Help us to love like you. So then, of course, as I was going through, you know, I go through media, and I uh, thank you so much to Life Church. I get all of this, this media and pictures and, and even ideas for sermons and things from them. But I saw love like Jesus, and I'm like, dude, this is what I, we've been praying for since last September. Lord, if there's one prayer that we have, it's love like Jesus. So the first week on Easter morning, we had uh, that he washes feet. And of course, we said that if you want to love like Jesus, you've got to give up all of your rights. Not a very American principle, okay? The second week, we talked about he's the forgiver of sinners, and how when we don't forgive, that's offensive to God. And also, you know, not forgiving somebody is like drinking poison and expecting the other guy to die. I love that saying. I love that saying so much. But here, finally, we see that Jesus breaks bread. Now, it would have been really easy right now to go ahead and preach on communion for this one, okay? Um, but we're not going to preach on communion today. No, we're going to look about how they came together for meals in the fellowship of the new church. Now, in Jewish custom, as a matter of fact, when he makes this proclamation, when he makes this proclamation, he is with his disciples at the Last Supper, and meals took hours, okay? It was one course after another course. It was the focal point of the day, and you didn't go to movies. You didn't get on Snapchat or Snapcrap or whatever it is, and you didn't get on, on Facebook and things. No, what you did is you ate together, and you would talk in between the different courses and different things, and so this was very much part of that, and, and it was a community. Now, check this out. 
they devoted themselves, this is Acts chapter 2, verse 42. This is after Jesus came, died on the cross, rose from the dead. And this is what happened as revival began to take place. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. Verse 44. All the believers were together and every, uh, were together and had everything in common. So they shared everything. They came and they laid all their property at the disciples' feet and they distributed it. And they sold their property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And of course, uh, verse 46, oh, we're going. We're, so nobody needed anything. All right? Everybody's needs were being taken care of. Verse 46, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts. So what did they do every day? Every day they went to church and they met together in homes. Every day the Bible says they did that. And they did it with glad and sincere hearts. Verse 47, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Now, sociologists tell us that there's actually um, people are more alone now than they have ever been before. There's more loneliness in our world now than there has been before. Um, and it's just a, a, a very difficult Thing. Why is that? Now, one sociologist said, well, it's because of air conditioning. Really? Air conditioning? Well, 50 years ago, what happened? If your house was hot, where would you go? Well, you'd go outside and you hang out outside. The same sociologist went on to say, and not only that, but we have built garages that are connected to our house. I never have to see my neighbors. I can, I go, I don't ever have to know them. I don't ever have to see them and we are separated from people and so at least then we still have the telephone and, and there was a day maybe you remember this day that when the telephone would ring you didn't know who was on the other end until you answered the phone and then you would answer the phone and there would be a moment when your heart would go oh it's you <laughs> right <laughs> oh no it's you man and and then oh man then some glory has happened then we got answering machines. And if you're at home, you could screen your calls. That was really awesome. That was, that was Jesus setting us free, brothers. No, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Um, now there's Instagram text. And, and if you remember a while ago, uh, we did a series on social media and, and that. And we are living in a culture that is more connected than any culture in the history of the planet. But we are feeling more and more alone. And the reason is, is because you were created for a community. And what all this social media stuff does, what all this computer stuff does, is that it, it creates an artificial community that doesn't go deep enough and that doesn't give you what you need. Now, now if you were to, now this verse that we just read, if you were to read this verse in the modern version, if the, in the Scott Cruz Modern version, actually, I, I stole this from somebody else. Um, but, but if there's a modern version, and, and nobody allows me to be a scholar. But if I was a scholar, this is how I would write the verse. And it says, the Christians were devoted to themselves. And occasionally they got to church when they had time to. No signs or wonders were performed by the believers. And very few of the believers were together. And they had almost nothing in common because they had no real time with each other. If they sold something, they used the money to buy something better for themselves and were too rushed to enjoy one another or give praise to God. They claimed to love God, but they didn't really love each other and they felt very empty and alone. As a result, most people dislike them because they're a bunch of crotchety old farts. No, it's not in there. Uh, and very few people were saved. Now, let me ask you a question. Which verse, the one in the Bible in the New Testament church, or the second one I read, which was a little extreme, I admit, but which one is closer to the reality of the Christian church, do you think? Is it fair to say that we can do better? Is it fair to say that maybe looking to our culture to get cues for what is appropriate for how we fellowship is not serving us well? That looking at our culture to tell us the best ways to interact with each other is not working very well for us. Is it safe to say that we should look to the scripture and to God with how we should love each other instead of looking at the world to try to learn how we should love each other? 
is better and more appropriate. Guys, we, we can do better. We can share the love of Jesus. And it's very different because in the scripture, they were completely dependent upon each other. American culture, I am independent. I don't need nobody for nothing. I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Nope, you don't. <laughs> but you know what? If you want your life to amount to anything, if you want to live in the victory that God has called you to, yes, you have to have a, you have to go to church. Now, now we have a personal relationship with Jesus, and I believe in that. It is good to have a personal relationship with Jesus, but in the scripture, most of their worship took place in the context of community. Now, they went to the temple every day. Now, fair enough, if you wanted to read the Bible, you had to go to the temple because you probably didn't read because you were probably a common person and not a, and not a scholar. And so they would read you the scripture every day in the temple. And I got it on my phone. I got my phone's right over there. I, I can whip out the Bible. I, so, that's so easy. And so we circumvent this going to the temple. I can just get on my phone. I don't need to go to the church to read the Bible. You know, and so we, we replace community with technology over and over and over again. But we are equipped to live in community and we experience, listen to this, we experience the presence of God best in community. <clears throat> we experience it. Now, as an example, last week, uh, we did a song in church, and it's, it's super powerful. It's called Soul Cries by Misty Evans. And, and I love the song. I call it meditative worship. When we do the song in church, I tell people, don't sing until you can't help yourself. I would rat because the whole song is scripture. I mean, almost the whole song is directly out of the Bible. And actually, a couple months ago, I went through the song in church, and I had the Bible verses up there the whole time just to prove that. Um, and so you're meditating on the scripture. I said, wrap your mind around every word of the song. And don't sing. I don't want you to be distracted by you trying to sing and get the words right. I want you to digest every word. Okay, anyway, that song is playing in my head all week last week because I put it together for the worship, right? And it's just one of those songs that just drone on in your head all the time. And so I get to church, and it's time for us to do that song in church. And, and we begin to sing worship. I step back from the mat. From both Inger Lisa and I step back. We don't sing because I don't want anybody to listen to my voice or Inger Lisa's voice and lose their and be distracted. I want them to be enamored completely with God. So we do our best to get out of the way. And so that song is playing in church, and I've asked people to meditate. Well, that's a corporate community setting. I've been listening to that song both uh, literally and in my own head all week long. When I'm in church, I'm not lying, tears down both sides of my cheeks. And, and, and I cried, like, was, glad the lights were off, you know, because I, I have tears both sides of my cheeks. What's the difference? Because we experience the presence of God best in community. We have to be with other believers in church. You got to be with believers in church. Now, check this out. Hebrews 10, 25. And let's consider how we may spur one another towards love and good deeds. I have a question for you. Do you have people in your life that are spurring you on? Do you have people in your life? Now, this, that isn't condemning. You know, if, someone, if a friend spurs you on, that's not a condemning thing, right? Do you have people in your life that will spur you on towards love and good deeds? Not spur you on to fishing more. Not spur you on for working out, okay? I'm pretty buff, right? I'm a week and a half. I haven't missed a day. Look how tough I am. I'm just kidding. All right. Um, verse 25. Not giving up, meeting together. Wow. Even in Hebrews, the Apostle Paul had to say, guys, don't give up living together. Oh, sure. You don't have to go to church to be a Christian, but you need to be spurred on. To love and good deeds, not giving up a meeting together, but so, so many, as so many are in the habit of doing, there's a little typo there in my notes, as so many are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Do you have people in your life that spur you on? Now, if you come to me in church and you say, Pastor, I'm, I'm going to be going in the hospital and I have this happening and I have this happening. And I say, hey, I'll be praying for you. Now that's good, right? Obviously, I, I, need to be, I need to be praying for people. Hope I'm not clipping everything here. 
Sorry about that little technical reach across. <clears throat> it's one thing to be praying for people. It's quite another to be praying with them. What's more powerful, me to say, hey, I'm praying for you, or to say, take my hand, let's pray. I tell you what, it's always better to have somebody pray with you. And now, uh, if you go to church, the average amount of time that Christians go to church in America, guess how often you go to church? One time a month. I can look across our church, and we have a lot of one time a month people. So much so that if we have, they tend to come on a day that we have a meal, and, I, and we have that keep having meals because it pulls in that fringe a little bit. Um, but I'll tell you what, man, it, it's, it, it's sad to see how many Christians are trying to live for Christ, and they're completely hamstringing themselves because they're out of fellowship. Now, remember what I said. It's not enough that you listen to this podcast or, or this uh, video or anything like that. It's not enough. You need to be with other Christians. You need, why? Well, because you're kind of hard to love when you're not there. All right, now check this out. Um, if, if, if you don't come to church, eventually life is going to kick you in the teeth, and you're going to need help. And when it's time to need help, if you don't have that support structure around you, then it, it's going to it's, it's gonna be very difficult to find that help. And I've had people in the church, and I've even said this to some of them, and, and you know what? You are hard to love when you're not here. You know, you're kind of hard to love when you're not here. You got to come to church, man. Now, I'll reach out and I'll do my best to, to do that. But sometimes I'll tell you, I, I, the pastor's heart, sometimes it feels like the phone only works one way, you know. And, and it's really sad. Now, I want to encourage you, too, that don't get discouraged. If you're in ministry, it can be discouraging because people reject you. And, and we have to be chasing people in ministry. That's just, that's just how it is. But if you are doing the bare minimum, you're going to church once a month, and you're teaching your kids that going to church is not important, don't be surprised when their hearts grow cold. Don't be surprised when they, when they grow up with, without having a passion for Jesus because they're seeing a lack of passion inside of you and a lack of, lack of commitment from you. That is just the case. If your marriage is weak, man, come to church. When life feels out of control, it's so important that you come and you be part of a committed community of people. It's so important to come and be a part of that community of people. Look at this again. They broke bread in their home and ate together with glad glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number every day. Man, there are some things that we're going to be doing at Rock Church with this in mind, okay? I want to love like Jesus, and we prayed it. Jesus, help me to be what you want me to be, do what you want me to do, because people thought you'd go to hell. I want my life to yield as many people in heaven as absolutely possible. That's, that's my cry. That's what I live for. And I believe that the church is the best way to get people to heaven. Has been for 2,000 years. Okay? And so the scripture says that they will know, they will know that you are Christians by how you love one another. And so that tells me that if I want the world to see Jesus and to know what we're about, they have to see us loving each other. And so we're going to be doing some different things. One thing is, is we are going to, I'm hoping, I'm praying, that I would have a smattering of people who are willing to do, I don't want to call them small groups. I want to call them tiny groups. Because one person is enough to pour into. And I am hoping that we can have different ones in our church having small groups. All you got to do to be a small group leader at The Rock is your doctrine doesn't have to be perfect, but you have to be teachable. Okay? You have to be teachable and be open to training and, and be teachable and humble and opening to training. You have to find a place to meet. Uh, it can be your home. It can be a community room. It can be a restaurant. It can, be, it can even be uh, on the phone. It can be online. Be creative. I don't really care. I'm just hoping to, to uh, the content. What kind of content do you have to do? Well, you know what? Your group, you pick. 
you know, like I said, just be teachable about the doctrine. And, and, we'll, and I will, I'll be with you. I'll help train you. I will brainstorm with you. And then the third thing you got to do if you want to be a tiny group leader at The Rock is you have to be willing to chase people. Because people will not come to your small group just because you threw open the doors. Build it and they will come does not work when it comes to tiny groups, okay? You got to pursue people and you got to be willing to pursue your people every week. Now, bless God, Facebook has made this really easy, and, but not everybody has Facebook. And so we have to be a people that are willing to, um, that are willing to reach out every single day. We can build this community. Now, we're going to be doing some other things. Now, we kind of got away from a monthly meal there for a while. And the reason for that is it, it, it costs us money to rent the facility because we're a church plant and we're in the movie theater and we can't have meals there. It's the one thing about, uh, about being at the movie theater that is unfortunate is we can't really eat together. It's hard to eat together. So we go someplace else. We've been going to Bonanzaville. We will be going to the Ralt Farm, but we're doing it every month now. And the reason is is because we've got to hang out together. We got to eat together. So that's another thing. We're, every month this summer, we're going to be getting out to uh, out to the park and we're going to barbecue and having a good time. Another thing, starting in about a month and a half or so, <clears throat> we're going to instead of having small group at our house, we are going to have a, a Wednesday night open house at our house. And all I ask is people RSVP and that they're they're a part of our church or they consider themselves a, a part of our church, and and they would come, and, and you can bring friends and stuff, but it's really intended for our church to get to know each other better. And, uh, and, and the reason why I want you to RSVP is, is I don't want to make too much food, okay? Uh, we're going to eat together. We're going to hang out. There's, we're not going to do, we might pray for the food or something, but it's going to be, we're going to be we're going to breaking bread together. And we're going to do that this summer because we want the world to look at us, and we want them to know that we're Christians by how we love each other. And so you see what's happening here. we got three things that we are very intentionally doing because we prayed since last September, Lord, I want to love like Jesus. And in loving like Jesus, these are the things that we're doing. And so I appreciate so much you taking the time to listen to this. And I really want to say this message and encourage you that you stop looking at the world to determine what's appropriate for your fellowship. Stop looking at the world to know how it, you should be responding to God. And instead, say, okay, God, what do you need from me? How did you create me? And I, if you want to love like Jesus loved, he did it in the context of community. And they did it every day in, in the temple and in the homes. We're looking to just, we're, we're stepping it up, but with lots of intentionality. So don't think, I can go where I don't have to go. Rock Church is not a social club. We are a team pursuing the lost. And the way to accomplish that is by getting each other's back and refusing to give up. So I'm going to pray. And I want to encourage you to pray with me. And as I pray, I'm going to dedicate my life to Christ. And so if you've never dedicated your life to Christ before or you've gotten wishy-washy in your decision for Christ, I encourage you to pray with me. I'm also going to pray that God would bless Rock Church with joyfully enjoying each other. That this summer would be, that it would be a, a flag in the sand moment for Rock Church. That we would know that we love each other. We enjoy each other. That when we pray, we would say, God, thank you for the people that you have put in my life to serve you with. That's our prayer. So I'm going to pray those things. I encourage you to pray with me. Right now, Lord, I thank you for the people who are watching this. And Lord, are all of our tech died on Sunday. And so it was really funny to be talking about having to be in church and that being at home wasn't good enough. And ironically, that was the day that all the tech died and anybody at home missed out. <laughs> and so Anyway, but we're doing this because I thought it was really important. And God, I thank you for what you've done in my life. And Lord, I give you all that I am. Everything I ever will be, my hopes, my dreams, everything, God, they are yours. And so, Father, I pray that you would pour yourself out in a, in a powerful way and that you would do that with me just enjoying the people that you have placed in my life to serve you with. Lord, that if there's somebody who maybe just kind of chafes us a little bit, I pray, God, we'd be really good at saying, Lord, this is for you 
and you want me to love this person. So, dear God, come and have your way in our lives. Take my life completely. And, Lord, I pray that Rock Church would be just a fun place to hang out. And, Lord, I'm, you know, I have a daydream. If you were to ever bless us with a building, I really don't want a new building to do church in. I love the movie theater, God. It's, it's a very central location, easy for people to come to that have never been to church before. But, God, I have found myself daydreaming about a clubhouse. Now, we are way far away from that financially. But, God, if you ever gave us a building, I don't know that I want a church building even. I would just want a place that we can hang, eat and hang out and pray and all those things. So, God, I don't know what you got in store, but, man, that'd be cool if you did that. But ultimately, Jesus, this is the last week that we've had this love like Jesus. But, Lord, I pray it would not stop here. But, God, moving forward, that you would truly teach us how to love. Because, Lord, the way our culture loves isn't good enough. The way our culture, the standards that they put up for what it means to be in fellowship, it isn't good enough. So, God, I pray that you would come and you would have your way with me, that you would change my heart in the name of Jesus and make me like you, dear God. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for checking this out today. Next Sunday, we are starting a new series called The Stand. Um, and we're going through the life of Daniel. I actually preached uh, a series with the same media about four years ago, but Daniel is such an incredible character study that we're going we're gonna, to uh, do. Uh, the content will change up, but the media will be the same. But Daniel is so cool. You're not going to want to miss this. May the Lord richly bless you, and I hope to see you in church on Sunday. Jesus was a rock star.